Did this viral prank make Asian guys look weak or is there more to it? Let's discuss. Yeah, a lot of discussion around this clip. Let's run it. Boom, there you go. That is the clip from Subway New York City prankster Ayo Sour. And as you can see, Andrew, even in his own comment section on TikTok, there's people going back and forth. Yeah, obviously, guys, I don't really like to call these pranks. I think this is a nuisance. What he's doing is harassment, technically. And so that's why it kind of like hurts me to see. But I get that these are like some street pranksters. They do this all throughout New York. They mostly bother, to be honest, non-black people. They've bothered a lot of white and Asian people on their TikTok, and I think maybe because they think they can get away with it more. But anyways, guys, they're pranksters. You guys can go on their TikTok page and leave a negative content uh, comment or downvote or whatever, however you feel. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce on Amazon. Uh, now, just to address, Andrew, your last comment, this guy, who I believe is uh, from the hood, he said... Dangerous game, cuz. I'm from NYC. You definitely would have got effed up respectfully if you did that to me. But then somebody came back and said, these boys know who to mess with and who not to mess with. Yeah, so I guess what we're going to be talking about in this video is like, I guess a larger question because there's countless videos of this. And let's just move it on a prank level. Like, this wasn't a full-on attack, but it was... Definitely, he's picking on Asian so guys. So you're saying you want to cross-reference this with other pranks that have taken place on TikTok or Instagram? Yeah, but the main question I want to ask in this video is like, what should we expect from other Asian guys, one, okay, as Asian guys, and also two, are we expecting each Asian guy to be responsible for flipping the stereotype, for breaking the stereotype, for being this like, more aggressive, well-trained, martial artist, self-defense guy that could, you know, two-piece this You're talking this about guy. Bruce Lee. Yeah, like, what's well, the this expectations? Guy, this, well, this guy was not Bruce Lee. No, he wasn't. But I'm just asking, what are we expecting from the average Asian male, I guess, in Right, this right, right. I mean, let's just continue in the comments section, Andrew. I think that's the best way to arrive to this discussion. An Asian guy commented on A.O. A. Sowers, targeting an Asian because you knew he wouldn't do nothing. Um... They were only harmless because they were Asians. Try doing that to a black couple. LMFAO, homie dipped on the shorty. Why was he more scared from the girl? Why did they only do it to white and Asian people? This ish is not funny. Stop Asian hate. Other people were laughing at it. Someone said, prob with East Asian guys, they are very submissive and passive. They don't fight back like Southeast Asian guys. They make Asian guys look weak and always get bullied. So here's the thing, Andrew. Do you think that guy was Chinese or was he... I mean, because he does have a Viet accent when he says, what the F, man? Right, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I was trying to listen closely to the audio and I asked some other friends. It's not, I'm not sure what he is, but if he is Viet, he probably sounds kind of like an international student. Like a you rich know. Hanoi uh, international student. No, Viet, I mean, right? there's though, that exists in New York that, that's City. That's a new archetype, He right? could also have goes been a, mom. a Chinese immigrant too from some sort or an international student from China. It could have been... Either way, he sounded either Chinese or Vietnamese. But anyways, regard the comment about Southeast Asians not getting picked on, it, if, if this is an international school student Vietnamese kid, he doesn't really fall under the Vietnamese that would fight back. That's not You're who they're talking about. like AZNs from like OC or Yeah, Arkansas we're not talking about Kevin Wins with the tatted and the drink Hennessy. Like those guys right. you would expect to fight back. But, right, right, right. But it does seem like on the internet when people stereotype East Asians, they're all thinking like computer programmer at Apple and for SEAs, they're all thinking like tatted up in an enclave. Yes, which is not true because I've actually, there's this video of this Korean guy who owns this moped who fights back this guy who's, he's trained in right, BJJ. We gonna, we gonna play that clip? Let's play the clip. But it is true that those are that's the prevailing bulk distribution stereotype. You would agree? Sure, sure, sure. So, I, Andrew, I had to type it into chat GPT real quick. It said, stereotypes and perceptions. 
Docility and passivity. There is a pervasive stereotype that Asians, particularly East Asians, are more passive, submissive, or less likely to retaliate in confrontational situations. Mm. This can make them seem like easier targets for pranks or violence. It also talks about the model minority myth, but... It also does say on a cultural difference level, many Asian cultures emphasize harmony, non-confrontation, and respect for authority, which can be interpreted as passivity in Western contexts. In situations of conflicts, some individuals from Asian backgrounds may avoid confrontation, leading to the perception they are easier targets. Yeah. So, I mean, it's what, David, is that making an excuse for him or what? I don't know. I mean, dude, there was a ton of... Com- <laughs> You know, it's like you saw a lot of people say that he should have done this or did that or acted like this guy who punched the traffic cone suit guy. Right. Um, I would say this, and uh, I don't know this guy. I uh, We don't know him. I think it's easy to be on the outside and say, oh, he should have punched him. He should have put him in a headlock. Put him in he a, hit him with the uppercut. With sh- the- yeah, uppercut him, or he should have dragged him out and put him in a chokehold and all these things. This guy is not trained. So I guess what I'm asking is, what do we expect from the average untrained Asian guy? If you're not trained, okay, any self-defense expert's going to tell you, hey, if you're not trained for this type of situation, don't engage if you don't have to. Right, you don't know if he's going to bite you, have a gun, have a knife, have a blade, have uh, any sort of... Even, I've seen some of these pranksters, Andrew, fight back, even though they were the ones who initiated the interaction exactly first of all i hate this type of content i hate this type of content i hate it in fact i wish this type of content was shut did down. you think the way he was crawling like uh the cat cartoon sort of was it funny at all no i there's i can Tom see the humor behind it but i actually i just i just hate this type of content because you're just messing with people's lives anyways any self-defense expert in their right mind is going to tell you, hey, if you're not trained for this situation and you don't have to engage and your life is not in danger, which this guy was being creepy and harassing this man, but maybe it wasn't clear that the life was in danger. So most self-defense experts would say, if you're not super well-trained, don't fight back because you don't know what's going to happen. You say don't hit him with the double piece, two piece. Well, especially if you don't know how, right? So it begs right. the other question, should every Asian guy learn how to do that? Are we now calling on the average Asian guy, whether they're geeky, they're an international yeah. student, whatever they are, yo, you got to take a Muay Thai class. Well, I guess if all Asian guys became like Bruce Lee, which is incredibly difficult, right? Because Bruce Lee was who Bruce Lee was even when he was like six years old by all accounts. It would change the overarching stereotype, wouldn't You're it? You're right. I think like it if, would. We, if it was the Matrix, we always talk about this, Andrew. If you could do the firmware update, like... And then just get all those mindsets and, and training downloaded into your brain yeah. versus like, but everybody knows you have to build that up over years. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, guys, it's, it's not just training and hitting the bag. It's actually, you'd have to train for situations on how to react like this. Because obviously a lot of the guys in the comments who are kind of like, yo, this Asian dude's a wuss. I would have need this guy in his face and done this and this. I was like, you're probably a person who has been in an actual street fighter bar fighter scuffle before this guy probably hasn't he probably hasn't been in this situation where he's someone's creeping on him he doesn't know what to do right he doesn't know well he's drinking a milkshake with a uniqlo bag that doesn't scream i'm an entrant in blood sport no it definitely screams like you know he's probably kind of a target and i'm just saying like it's not super simple to fight you know this guy could have been a drug addict leaning over yeah. falling over passing out on fentanyl we don't know and it's tough because man i've seen like all right so this one there was really no harm no foul even though we got his milkshake taken right because obviously the prankster drinks his milkshake you don't know if off camera he gave him another five or ten dollars to repay for the milkshake i doubt that he did to be honest but um and there was just a 19 year old kid in koreatown los angeles who actually just died from being attacked mm. and um you know, he, I guess apparently in the, while he was getting kicked on the ground, he didn't fully fight back because he thought his attacker had a gun on him. Oh. So I'm just saying it can obviously work out. There's a variance, I'm saying, of outcome. Yes. Um, yes. Anyway, let's just take a look at the comments section right now. Somebody said, this prankster need to get smashed in the head. I'm so sick of it. This dude didn't handle it right. That's why we get no respect. Mm. Um, this guy said, of course... They picked on this guy because he looks particularly nerdy with the glasses and the skinny build and not cool clothes or not buff. Don't 
let yourself look vulnerable. What do you think about this? I, I think this is the probably fairest comment of them all. I think this comment that says, hey, guys, objectively speaking, this guy kind of looked uh, vulnerable. By the way, this comment was from other Asians. Yes. And I'm saying I can agree with this comment here. I don't agree in saying, oh, this guy should have punched him three times because I'm like, well, if this guy's not trained in punching and he's not prepared for that, then don't punch him three it's times. It's not even going to work. Well, it'll make things worse probably. So, but what I'm saying is it starts way before that and it's about deterrence, right? And this is how we talk about, unfortunately, guys, I know not everybody here is pro tattoos, but I'm saying tattoos, working out, dressing differently, it does deter this type of behavior. I have plenty of friends that this guy's not gonna target. I don't even think this guy's gonna target necessarily even me. And I'm not like the furthest thing from this guy in the glasses, but I'm just saying I might appear and feel a little bit differently. You know what I mean? But this guy drinking the milkshake, he's with his girl, he's in a vulnerable state. He does look vulnerable. Right, and right. Yeah, he, well, is, uh, let's he be does honest. fall under the geeky category. Yeah. There's no diss to him. I'm just saying he falls under right, that. Right, right, right. I mean, let's just look at it quantitatively in terms of a geek rating what would you say this guy was out of 10 if you just had to throw a number out there? Like a seven or an eight? Uh, probably, yeah, six to six to seven. I, I'm saying that this prankster, if if we analyze the prank, I don't know if this prankster is this quantitative, but he may have a geek, geek bar in his mind for like power levels like Dragon Ball Z. And the second it tracks above a six or a seven out of 10, that's when he's going into... I can pick on this person mode, much like a middle schooler or high schooler bully has in the background of their subconscious processes. Oh, 100%, guys. Most trolls and pranksters of this type, they're scanning people. Like, that's why this guy's pranks, I've watched his other videos on TikTok, he only pranks, like, other older white people on the train that have, like... Fortune 500 jobs that look like they got a lot to lose. He's spraying soda on everybody. And You're saying he's making a read based on his predict the, his fan duel odd probability of how they're going to react. For sure. There's this one video, and I'll pop up this picture, where he kind of pranks and yells at this tall black guy, but he doesn't get up in the black guy's face. He just kind of yells at him and does like a quick prank, like a, ah! and then that's it. And then he walks away. So kept, I was like, it real, kept it real light. Kept it real light for him, yeah. So he's scanning, and that's why that's why I don't like these dudes. Uh, this might be a this guy. This girl said this guy might be a byproduct of parents who told him to stay quiet and not cause cause problems. I'm not saying we teach kids to solve issues by fighting, but we should teach them to stand up for themselves. Well, did this guy not stand up for himself? He he did give up his milkshake, but he did get away safely. But it looks like it's true that he didn't clear his girlfriend away from the from the pathway first. Yeah, listen, I'm not saying this guy's not prepared. Listen, I, all I'm gonna, it's, it comes down to this, man. Listen, we can go through every comment. It, it doesn't fully matter. If you are a guy who appears to be geeky and not trained and doesn't work out and you have this image Unfortunately, in a city like New York City, there's a chance you get picked on or pranked on. Right. And Because in New York City, you're sort of subject to the whole uh, just thousands and thousands and thousands of people doing whatever they want, yeah. right? So if you don't want to get picked on, you either don't look like that or you train yourself and get somewhat prepared for this type of thing. Right. What about people stepping in? Someone said, I get we got to mind our business, but at some point, gotta, someone got to look out for homie and step in. But then I was always thinking in my head, I was like, wait, as another Asian guy, you have to step in and then fight the prankster or what is the situation? Or do you, do you just step in once it gets physical? Like if the guy were to punch the prankster and the prankster were to, and hit the cameraman, we're going to start fighting him. I guess what I'm saying is like, it, it's not a invalid question, but I would just like more details. Yeah. Um, somebody said the wife should leave him because clearly he's not able to defend her in a situation, I, I don't know. Because obviously, listen, these people, they're probably not thinking that this is gonna be their day-to-day -day lifestyle. Yeah, trust They're, they're me. probably from Asia and they probably like live in Asia and they're just visiting or something like that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like they're not spending the majority of their, society, uh, their time in society preparing for these instances. Yeah, obviously I wouldn't tell this guy to like join the police academy now or something like that. He's probably not prepared for that. But I'm just saying like, yeah, I think people have a different culture and different expectation for life. So I don't necessarily think this girl needs to leave him just for this. I mean, right. he did get away safely because my whole question is this. 
What if he fought back and something really bad happened and then he got hurt or died? Are we going to like raise him up as a martyr and say, oh, well, this Asian guy, at least he tried, man. Shout out to this Asian guy. He tried, but he died. And I'm like, are we really going to do that? Yeah. Is that what we're looking for? Well, I think that that's why it's important to talk about these instances so people can make better reads because sometimes it is very 50-50 in a gray zone, right? And there's times where you're absolutely going to need to fight back to even like save your own life. Yeah. But then there's going to be times where, you know, obviously you're handling it better for it was just a prank. It ended up just being a prank. Uh, a lot of people were talking about sports, Andrew. Team contact sports, specifically soccer or martial arts, uh, basically being something that a lot of moms and dads don't necessarily stress for kids because they want the kids to have high SAT scores and go into STEM jobs and become doctors. But even in their day-to-day -day life, and possibly even within that field, those will be uh, important skills to have. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I think that that's the key, man. I think that definitely uh, drink milk, too. Like, if you're a, uh, an Asian woman that's pregnant, somebody was saying that because Asian women sometimes don't really drink milk because there's not that hardcore milk culture, the guys are not, like, growing up with, like, strong bones during the gestation period in the womb. Mm. So there was a lot of interesting comments. I'll say this, man. Ultimately, this is my takeaway. Everybody grows up with access to different systems, you know, and I just think that, you know, what we can't really like control how we're raised or like, you know how like some people had like a gangster for a dad or like a tough guy for a dad all the way to like a, a martial arts master for a dad. Obviously, those sons are way more equipped to deal with these type of situations. Your dad is like a Krav Maga, urban street Krav Maga instructor. Yeah, of course, you're going to be good at it. Other people's dads gave them the wrong coaching. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm saying is people should just reach out um, in, in, into their immediate circles, share this video, and then ask people what they would do. That might be the best thing to do to get people's minds going. Mm, have a discussion about this amongst your friends. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would just say like a lot of, I was just speaking as a, for Asian dudes, like a lot of people don't do things unless they have an incentive. So when it comes to like training or like learning boxing or Muay Thai or any sort of like BJJ and self-defense type things, like what's your incentive? You as an Asian guy have to define your incentive or else you're not going to do it. Now, is it because uh, you don't want to be a victim ever again because you got picked on or you don't like that feeling? That's a real reason. That's a, that's a lot of people's motivations because ultimately training it costs money. It takes time. It's uncomfortable. It's humbling. It's sweaty. It's stinky. You might get hurt. Right. You might injure yourself, right? Yeah. Like learning so, the kicks. So or you whatever. have to have a strong incentive to learn these things if they're not built into your lifestyle. If your parents didn't teach them to you, if your neighborhood, you know, wasn't that type of neighborhood where you had to be tough, you have to find an incentive and identify as someone who's not a victim, right? Right. I mean, ultimately, guys, I wish I could give everybody like a firmware download that's going to work for everybody. But one thing I would say for any guy living in the West is take Muay Thai, man. Maybe even go to Thailand for a couple of weeks. Take Muay Thai every day from some experts. It's super cheap. I think that that could even be a really crazy boost of confidence. And like, obviously, sports is the is the easiest way to get the the, the same sort of like vibe contentious vibe and know how to handle conflict but without the nexus necessary like direct hand-to-hand -hand combat aspect mm -hmm. and uh yeah anyway guys let us know what you think in the comment section below uh these videos are probably there's probably not gonna be the last one that ever pops up until next time we the hop hop boys we out peace, peace.